Hello and welcome to Lesson 5 of the Food Handler Safety Course provided by Texas Bass Food Services Training. I'm Bradley Jean Cox, the instructor for this lesson. This lesson will cover time and temperature requirements for food handling. Definition of Potentially Hazardous Food Potentially hazardous food, or PHF, means a food that requires time and temperature control for safety, or TCS, in order to limit pathogen growth or the production of toxins. Potentially hazardous food includes the following. An animal food, such as fresh eggshells, raw or heat treated, food of plant origin, heat treated, or the food consists of raw seed sprouts, cut melons, and garlic and oil mixtures that is not treated in such a way to prevent harmful growth of pathogens or the production of toxins. Food whose pH AW interaction is designated as a PHF TCS food in one of the following tables. Unless product assessment or vendor documentation acceptable to the regulatory authority is provided. PH AW. PH is the measure of acidity or alkalinity of a substance. The scale is from 1 to 14. A 7 is neutral. Numbers less than 7 are acidic. The number 1 is the most acidic that a substance can be. If the pH is greater than 7, the food is an alkaline. For example, orange juice is acidic and milk is an alkaline. Other things being equal, the more acidic or the lower pH of a food, the safer it is from a PHF TCS standpoint. AW is the water interaction of a substance. Basically how wet it is naturally. Other things being equal, the more AW or wet a substance is, the more dangerous it is from a PHF TCS standpoint. Technically, AW is the quotient of the vapor pressure of the food divided by the vapor pressure of pure water. This table um, shows different pH values and AW values. Notice as the pH increases and the AW increases, the more likely it is to be a PHF TCS food. Another chart showing control of vegetable cells and spores. Notice again at the bottom right you have your PHF TCS foods. The higher the pH, the higher the AW, the more likely it is to be a PHF TCS food. Potentially hazardous food does not include air cooled hard boiled eggs with the shell still intact. Also a shell egg that the salmonella has been destroyed. Or a food whose pH AW interaction is designated as a non-pH AW in the previous tables. A food that can achieve and maintain sterility under conditions of non-refrigerated storage and distribution and kept in a hermetically sealed and open container or food that demonstrates by product assessment and laboratory test that time and temperature control for safety is not necessary for that food. Or it may contain a preservative or other barrier to the growth of microorganisms, which could be a combination of barriers that prevent microorganic growth, or food that does not support the growth of microorganisms, or a food that is considered non-PHF or TCS due to its pH AW. Potentially hazardous food, hot and cold holding. Is it important to understand the temperatures at which hot and cold potentially hazardous foods must be held in order to keep them safe? Hot foods, except when being prepared, potentially hazardous foods 
should be maintained at or above 135 degrees Fahrenheit. The exception is that roasts cooked at proper time and temperature or reheated may be 130 degrees. Cold foods. Refrigerated potentially hazardous food must be stored at 41 degrees or less another temperature specified by law. Milk and molluscan shells have their own rules. Potentially hazardous food must be received at less than 41 degrees. Eggs 45 degrees. Reheating and holding. Unless otherwise noted any potentially hazardous food that is cooked, cooled, and reheated for the purposes of hot holding must be heated to a temperature of 165 degrees and must also reach this temperature in a microwave. Ready to eat food that is commercially processed and in a hermetically sealed container or from an intact package from a food processing plant that is regularly inspected must be heated to at least 135 degrees. And any un remaining unsliced portions of roast that are cooked as specified may be reheated for hot holding using the oven parameters and minute minimum time and temperature conditions as detailed below. Potentially hazardous food. Cooking temperatures. Very important. In order to prevent potentially hazardous foods from harming those who consume them, it is very important that these foods are cooked at the correct temperature. Raw animal food. Eggs, fish, meat, poultry, and foods containing these must be cooked to heat all parts of the food to a temperature as follows. 145 degrees for raw shell eggs cooked for immediate service and fish, meat, pork, and all game and exotic animals commercially raised. 155 for injected meats and a few rarities. Comminuted fish, ground meat, game animals and exotic animals commercially raised as specified under these sections in the TFER and exotic animals under a voluntary inspection program specified under this subsection of the TFER and raw eggs for other than immediate service. 165 degrees for poultry and wild game and exotic animals. Stuffed fish, stuffed meat, stuffed pasta, Stuffed poultry or stuffings that contain these products. Basically anything stuffed and poultry. Here's a nice little chart. Kind of says the same thing. Poultry. 165 degrees. That must be maintained for 15 seconds. Ground meat, including beef, pork, and other meat. 155 degrees. 15 seconds. Injected meats, 155 for 15 seconds. Pork, beef, veal, and lamb. Steaks and chops, 145 for 15 seconds. And roast, 145, but for four minutes. Fish, 145 for 15 seconds. Egg, ground, chopped, minced fish, 155, 15 seconds. Eggs for immediate service, 145. 15 seconds. Eggs that will be hot held. 155. 15 seconds. Commercially processed, ready to eat food that will not be hot held for service, like cheese sticks, fried vegetables, chicken wings, etc. 135 degrees for 15 seconds. Here's a chart shows cooked raw animal food. This chart shows that the minimum temperature can be changed a little bit if for some reason it needs to be, but the time duration will change accordingly. So if you have to deviate from the specified time or temperature, look up in this chart to see what the temperature and time must be. Whole beef roast, corned beef roast, pork roast, cured pork roast, such as ham, must be cooked in an oven preheated properly. 
according to its weight, and all parts must be heated for a holding time that corresponds to the following temperature. Two types of ovens, still dry and convection. And is it less than 10 pounds or more than 10 pounds? And a still dry less than 10 pounds, 350 degrees. Still dried more than 10 pounds, 250 degrees. Convection oven, 250 degrees. No matter what the weight. High humidity, 250, no matter what the weight. Cooked whole beef or corned beef roast, heating temperatures and holding time. This chart just shows that the temperature can be deviated a little bit, but the time must be changed accordingly. If for some reason you deviate from the required temperature, look up in the chart how long it must be held at that temperature. Other potentially hazardous food. A raw or undercooked whole muscle intact beef steak may be served or offered for sale in ready to eat form if the establishment does not usually serve those in the highly susceptible population, which is of course preschool, elderly, and the immunocompromised, and the steak is labeled that it meets the condition whole muscle, intact beef, and the steak is cooked on top and bottom to at least 145 degrees, and a cooked color change is achieved on all surfaces, such as when cooking a rare steak. A raw animal food, such as raw eggs, fish, raw marinated fish, raw molluscan, shellfish, steak tartare, or partially cooked food, such as lightly cooked fish, soft cooked eggs, rare meat that is not whole muscle or intact beef may be served or offered for sale in ready to eat form if the customers are not usually in the highly susceptible population. And the customer is informed of this, and the food is cooked as specified. The regulatory agency can grant a variance from these specifications based on the HACCP plan. And this plan must be submitted by the permit holder and approved as specified in this section of the TFER. And you must have documentation that includes scientific data or other information it shows a lesser time and temperature can result in safe food. And verify that equipment and procedures used in food preparation and training of both employees and the establishment meet the conditions of this variance. Frozen food must be stored and maintained as frozen. Surprise, surprise. Frozen potentially hazardous food that is slack to moderate the temperature must be held under refrigeration at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or less and the food remain frozen. Potentially hazardous foods should be thawed under refrigeration that maintains the food's temperature at 41 degrees or less or completely submerged under running water. This water must be 70 degrees or less, have enough flow to agitate and float off the loose particles and for a period of time that does not allow any th thawed portion to be greater than 41 degrees. In other words, you can't just lay it on the counter. Time is a public health control and potentially hazardous foods. Unless otherwise noted, if time only, rather than a combination of time and temperature controls, is used as a public health control for a working supply of potentially hazardous food before cooking or for ready to eat potentially hazardous food displayed or held for service for immediate consumption, the following rules apply. Food must be marked or identified in order to indicate when four hours has passed since the food has been removed from time and temperature controls. And the food must be cooked and served served as ready to eat or thrown away when this four hour time frame is passed. Food that is unmarked packages or containers must be thrown away because there's no telling what's going on with it. Written procedures that are followed by the food establishment concerning this procedure must be available to the regulatory authority. And time only controls may not be used for a highly susceptible population or for raw eggs. 
freezing and microwaving of raw animal food. Raw animal foods have specific requirement, temperature-wise, if they're to be frozen or microwaved. Raw animal foods, microwave, must be rotated or stirred throughout or midway during cooking. They must be covered to retain surface moisture. They must be heated to a temperature of at least 165 degrees in all parts of the food and they must stand for two minutes after cooking for temperature equilibrium. Fruits and vegetables that are cooked for holding must be cooked to 135 degrees. Raw animal foods, freezing. Freezing destroys parasites, so raw fish is able to be used for human consumption. Before it can be in a ready to eat form, raw, raw marinated, Partially cooked or partially marinated cooked fish, excluding mollusk and shellfish, must be frozen and stored at a temperature of minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit or below for 7 days, or frozen at minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 hours. There are certain species of tuna fish, commonly called yellowfin, bluefin, or big eye that may be served or sold in a raw, raw marinated, or partially cooked ready to eat form without freezing. Food thermometer. A food thermometer is to accurately measure the temperature of food. This is necessary since most rules regarding food preparation involves temperature controls. Thermometer calibration. Devices scaled only in Celsius or duly scaled must be accurate within one degree of the intended range of use. Devices scaled in Fahrenheit must be accurate within two degrees in the intended range of use. Thermometers should be scaled in ice water for thermometers used primarily for cold foods. And thermometers should be scaled in boiling water for thermometers primarily used for hot foods. Distilled water should be used since tap water has stuff in it which affects the boiling and melting points of the water. The altitude is a little important. Water boils at 212 degrees at sea level, but 2,000 feet up, nearly a half mile, it boils at 208 degrees. The National Institute of Standards and Technology recommends that food thermometers be calibrated at least annually. Calibration of thermometers in ice water. Place the thermometer in a crushed ice and distilled water slurry for one minute, ensuring that the thermometer does not touch the container. If the thermometer does not read between 30 and 34 degrees, adjust to 32 degrees. Non-adjustable thermometers must be serviced professionally. Calibration of thermometers in boiling water. Bring a container of distilled water to a boil. Place the thermometer in the water, ensuring that it does not touch the sides. If the th thermometer does not read between 210 and 214 degrees, adjust to 212. Non-adjustable thermometers must be serviced professionally. Thermometers that cannot be calibrated through the above methods should be calibrated comparing the, the results to calibrated thermometers. Thermometers that are used to measure critical control points in HCCP plans should be calibrated daily or weekly. Managers and certified food managers can assist you in performing this properly. And that brings us to the end of lesson five. Thank you very much. Next there'll be a short review and then you can download your card.